Welcome to Our Story, the podcast. Every month, Pastor Mark from Harmony Toluca Lake sits down with a guest to discuss their journey of faith from an inclusive, affirming point of view. These personal stories are part of a colorful tapestry of individual life experiences that transcend the boundaries of church by connecting us all together, collectively, through faith, hope, and love. This is Our Story. Hey everyone, Pastor Mark here with Harmony Toluca Lake, an affirming faith community and second campus of Hollywood United Methodist Church. And this is Our Story, the podcast. And we have the blessing of Gaddison, our worship leader here at Harmony, to have a conversation with. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> yeah. So, well, first off, how are you doing? I'm doing good. It's a good day, beautiful, sunny day in uh, Los Angeles, so I really cannot complain. Oh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's start off with this question of uh, God. Mm. You know, just a little simple just thing. Just a small question. <laughs> small start. <laughs> when you think of God, mm. what comes to mind first? Um... What comes to mind first is the ultimate fashion designer. Mm. Yeah, because when I think of creation, the creation story, I think of how God had to be such an amazing fashion designer (laughs) to design uh, animals, different types, different colors, the, the everything that we see, the aesthetics, the runway um, that all these animals are on, and then to f- for the grand finale was humans. And it just, something about that just sounds so cool to me. And uh, I just love seeing God as um, creator. Well, I think it's also fashion designer. Yeah. We're talking about plants. Yeah. All the colors of the sky. The, the, right? It's, it's like, it's like the, to me, it's like the earth is the runway in which... Mm-hmm these designs get to kind of breathe and have life and um, be displayed. So. Plus the universe. Yeah, yeah. You know, that little thing. So. That, the colors of the universe are <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Phenomenal, vivid, vibrant. Um, and I just, I don't know, something about that um, makes God feel so um, regal, royal, um, uh, an expert at what he does, what she does, what they do, um, but also this idea of I don't know it. I don't makes it makes it makes them so cool. I don't know. It's just like a, it's a cool <laughs> thought. So anyway, but so we're talking about this, but to me, it almost it it seems very relatable to you in your own life. Yes. How you live your yes. life. Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, one, I really love fashion, um, and I love it as the art of expressing yourself. Um, and so I really, really appreciate fashion. I really appreciate colors and different things like that. You wouldn't be able to tell necessarily right now that I appreciate colors, but I love colors, <laughs> uh, including black. You know, it's a mood. Um, so, um, but anyway, so I just, I just feel like that's such a beautiful thing. And I relate to um, that idea of um, even just in the process of creating clothes myself, um, it's just, there's something so beautiful and divine about um, filling textures and um, mm. thinking with your mind what you want the end product to look like and, and why you want it to look that way and why you want it to be constructed that way. So it's really cool. And I love that God took that much intentionality and time to, to form and fashion all of us. It reminds me of a recent dinner that you talked to me about because you talk about colors and textures and mm-hmm. food has that as well. Yes. Right? And I, and I almost see God in the food. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and listen, there's some, there's some food that God is more in than others. <laughs> um, listen, you take me down uh, for some soul food, God is all up and through that plate. Um, and, uh, no, but I just, I love food too. I love that God is in everything. He surrounds everything. She, uh, consumes everything. Um, and, and that, that is the beauty of God is that it's, Mm. it's, it's all consuming. It's, it's literally everywhere you turn, whether you turn inward or whether you look at the world around you, it is all a part of, of God. Yes. Amen. So what, for you, if you can remember, what would you say is, 
one of your earliest experiences of God or the concept of God? Yeah, definitely. Earliest. Woo! <laughs> well, you know, I was raised in the church. So um, I, I, that's a really kind of complicated question for me to, to answer because I feel like there is my concept as a small child that church was God. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so because I was at church so much, that was God. God was just going to church, if that makes sense. Um, but then there are moments where it was like, oh, I feel God. I feel a presence. I feel something that is bigger than myself, not just the organization or the building, if that makes sense. So going past the word, because it is, it's yeah. very easy to think of church as right. God. Right, right. But it's uh, the presence. When, when do you think that you felt the presence of God? I definitely was younger, uh, probably around my son's age, around seven. Um, and I just remember being in um, church and just I, the preacher was talking about God and love and that kind of thing. And it, it just something happened. There was just some type of presence, I just felt the goosebumps. I just felt something that was like, wow, um, if that's who God is, then that's a, a person, an entity that mm. I really want to be a part of my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then so as a worship leader, mm -hmm. I am certain uh, music came into your life probably at an early age. Oh my gosh, yes. Music has been around forever. <laughs> uh, my whole family is very musical. Uh, and if you don't sing, you play an instrument, okay? Uh, and uh, so, yes, definitely music has always been around, and I've always felt um, music is a way of being able to express myself to God, um, hear, like through the lyrics, hear uh, what God feels about me. Uh, because what's so interesting for me about worship songs is... Um, <clears throat> A lot of times we focus on like, hey, I'm singing this to God about love, right? And um, But a lot of times it's like I hear God singing those same things over us, right? This idea of like God's love, it's just so unconditional, it's wild, it's reckless, it's, it's, it's just all-consuming. And so um, I can tell you many times where I have gotten my mind blown by just like God stopping me from singing. And being like, Gaddison, will you allow me to sing this over you? Mm. I mean, you know, drop the mic. When God <laughs> sings, you gonna know something. So, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> well, so, uh, as a worship leader, you had to have heard a call. Yes. And when 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 was that? Um, you know, oh, it's so interesting because I think for me. The call, and maybe like most people, right? Like the, the, the call came when I was uh, in Bible college. And um, How old were you at that time? At that time, I had to be about 20. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so scared. And I've been singing in church my whole life, but I had been in more like a gospel environment, like choirs and that kind of thing. And so I, in this Bible college, it was much more, um, you know, Hillsong. It's the first time I heard about Hillsong was like oh. 20, 21 years old. <laughs> and so I was like, what is this? This is awesome. And, um, and so I uh, had so much doubt and so much fear, so much um, insecurity. Um, mm. But God, I felt like God called me into it, into the ministry in terms of worship um, and asked me if I would be willing to um, lead people and create a safe space in which people could connect to God and God could connect to people. And um, music was that way that I just mm. knew it's kind of a universal language for people, right? You don't even necessarily need to speak the same language, but there's something about music that just sets a safe space for people to enjoy, for people to uh, connect in a, in a deeper way with each other, the people around them, and with God. Mm. So when you were 20 and you went to the Bible college, mm -hmm. uh, was there something that you intended to do 
Well, it was just for me, to be really honest, I had always had this love for God. Um, and I knew I wanted to do something significant for God. I knew that I wanted to give my life in a way that um, that God was just so pleased with, right? Like that there was, I was created for something more. And um, and so I knew that I wanted to, 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 in some way, shape, or form, go into ministry. I didn't really fully know how. I knew I liked music, but I didn't really know how that could be something. But, um, but eventually, you know, uh, God specifically called me to that. And, um, I mean, that took off and did whatever it did. And so um, it's, been, it's been an amazing journey for me, to be honest. Oh, yes, it has been an amazing journey, which we're going to continue to travel down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do have a question, though, about just for people in general, mm -hmm. music. Yes. How does music speak to one's soul, whether they're Christian mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. I mean, just from a human level. Right, right, right. From a human level, I think music just has, um, and I think this is true about art in general, but music specifically, I think it, it just has something um, that transcends how we, our belief systems. Uh, it transcends our um, uh, pain of the moment. Um, it allows us, and, and I'm, it's so fascinating to me that, um, you know, I, I used to look at uh, these uh, dance music festivals and it would always give me goosebumps because, you know, raised in the church, right? But then you see these massive dance festivals, and there's just a part where everybody lifts their hands in the air, mm -hmm. and it so reminds me of church, right? But there is something so transcendent about music. It, it really does speak to, I think, one of the more primal parts of who we are, some of the, the core parts of who we are. There is even the um, scientific uh, uh, study of how we are music. Our DNA um, is music, and it actually plays a song. And, um, and it's just really fascinating that I think at a very core level, um, more than what we understand and know, we are music. Music is, uh, is, is, was used to even create us. And, right. um, and so I just, I think that people, regardless to whether uh, their religious affiliation, uh, just resonate with music so deeply because it's at the deepest part of who we are. Right. And you and I have never discussed this, but I believe that music happened at the very beginning yes. of creation. Yes. And even though humans yes. weren't here and we didn't uh -huh, hear it, uh -huh, uh -huh. there was music. Yes. And there was, even when you, when you read about uh, those scriptures about heaven and what it was like when Lucifer was um, in heaven, the Bible talks about how he was built with instruments inside, right? And, and I think that there is something to be said of that, that Lucifer, one of the... Um, the, the main angels, right, was, was built to be able to communicate music um, before the throne of God. And so I think that there's just, there's something very strategic about mm. music mm -hmm. and God's intent yes. for, uh, for us. So um, big question okay. as we're starting to head down this way is, is um, what was your journey like before you came to harmony. So, um, like I said, lots of insecurities at the beginning, uh, lots of fear, which I think is just kind of a human thing, right? We all have to um, kind of face ourselves, face um, fear. Um, so, lots of fear at the beginning, but had lots of people that really believed in me, had lots of people who um, took the role of mentoring me. So I started when I was at Capital Christian Center in Sacramento, California, went to Master's Commission, which is their um, kind of discipleship program. And essentially, um, uh, the, <laughs> my class was uh, 12 people. Okay, so it's very small. 
intimate. Um, and they had like three different years that you can be in in the, in the school. And so we had maybe about, you know, uh, 30 people, 30 students in the whole school. And so anyway, um, we would do chapels. And so slowly but surely, they started letting me lead the chapels. And, and then um, they saw that I was doing well there. Uh, and then they, they, the Capital Christian Center is a, is a mega church. And so they started to let me lead at the youth uh, service. And that was big at the time. I think they were at like 500 students that came mm. on a weekly basis. And so I started leading there. And, and then they, started, they saw that I was doing well there. And then they let me do an event. And so I did a citywide worship night and um, um, brought people, different churches from around the city to come in. And then from there, I ended up going to I did three years there. They ended up going to Foothill Community Church, which then turned into Renaissance Church. But it was a new pastor who came in to an older church, and they wanted him to kind of, you know, um, revive it. It was an Assemblies of God church. And so they hired me to be the main worship leader. Now, Grant, now, just, just to, for context, I am at this point 22, 23 years old. Okay, so I'm a young whippersnapper. Uh, I am leading a band, and the band, there is no band member in this band that is under 60. Oh. So that's great. That's yeah, awesome. You got, you got, you got uh, age talent. Right. <laughs> but, but the task that I was um, presented with was, hey, we want to, in general, the musical sound, we want to make it a little younger. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as a 23-year-old trying to lead uh, people 60 and over into a younger sound was quite the challenge. But, um, you know, through communication skills and, and allowing people to express their feelings and fears and concerns and all that kind of stuff, we ended up, uh, by the time I left, which I was there two and a half years, I believe, but we had rotating teams. We had um, uh, three out of the five members that were on the original team stayed and held, um, including a saxophone, which was mm. epic. Mm. Uh, and, um, and it was thriving. And um, I appreciated that time. That time taught me a lot about leading worship, specifically in a context of a... a um, a main service church. Then went from there into um, Bethel School of Ministry, which is a whole thing in and of itself. But th this is where I learned humility <laughs> because um, I tried out for the team. My cousin was heavily involved in the, the worship there. They, they, and this, and Bethel, if you don't know Bethel, Bethel is arguably one of the biggest um, contemporary worship bands out, period. I mean, it's Hillsong, Bethel, you know, Jesus Culture, that kind of thing. And I was going to get a chance to lead for the school. The school is like, my class alone is about a thousand people. So mm. this is definitely mm. like, wow, this is going to be, you know, my cousin, again, like I said, has traveled with all these people, mm. done the whole thing. And so uh, I get up there and my favorite, oh, my favorite worship leader from there, her name is uh, Stephanie Gretzinger, and she is there. Um, it's like, it's almost imagine American Idol, but it's worship. <laughs> okay. And so they're sitting out there, and I'm on the stage, and I'm singing a song. And Stephanie, my favorite worship leader, it's like, she's like, on her knees and she's just worshiping. So I'm like, oh my God, yes. You know, she's worshiping to like my lead. That's crazy, you know? Uh, and so uh, it's like it's like your favorite pastor being in the audience and you're preaching a message and he's like, yeah. And you're like, whoa, I did that one, you know? So anyway, um, so I get off the <laughs> stage and uh, and I get off the stage and I'm like, oh my gosh, I think I think this is it. And it, like you know, people are telling me I did a great job, blah blah. blah. So it's like it's like a high school movie, right? Where you know you you have the the um, the list that's going to be posted on the the lockers to see who mm, who got in, mm, right? Mm. So I go, it's like a couple days later, I go up to the list and I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, like this is it. So I look, I'm looking at my name. I don't find my name. I'm like, wait, hold on. Hold on. I, I, wait, I just, I'm just so excited. I didn't see it. So I'm like looking again. I look at it like three or four times and I didn't see my name. 
And I was like, so shocked. Mm. I was so I was so taken back. And um, this is where I learned humility. And I learned the art of being able to lead worship and not having to be on the stage. I learned how to lead worship from the crowd. Mm. I learned how to say that worship is, has nothing to do with the stage and leading worship has nothing to do with being on a stage. It has everything to do with the heart posture and that all of us actually have a responsibility to lead ourselves in worship. Mm. And that when we do that in a room with other people who know how to lead themselves in worship, it creates this presence it creates this atmosphere that is ripe for the presence of God to come and have a collective experience with God. But uh, for that whole year, I sat and had to deal with my feelings of, well, that worship leader is not as good as me. I'm just saying the real. But it's like, yo, is that the point? Mm -hmm. You know, I had to take a really good look at me and be like, is that really the point? Is that what I should be leading worship out of anyway? Mm -hmm. Is that the heart position of a worship leader that should be on stage? And I had to really sit with me and be like, wow, okay. Um, there's some stuff here that obviously I need to sit down. Mm -hmm. I need to go ahead and sit down. And I need to work it out before God. And I need to learn how to lead my own self in worship and uh, do that from the... So that was, oh my gosh, that was a wild season of life for me. And then uh, after that went down to, um, to LA, I was um, brought on as the worship director for a, a school of ministry. So it was kind of a full circle. It was um, a, a school of ministry that Bethel had planted in LA, Pasadena to be exact, another big church out there called uh, H-Rock Church. And, uh, and so got a chance to do that, be there. So many beautiful moments. And um, that taught me passion in worship. Oh, it, I, woo! I mean, there, there was just such a hunger. And I know you've been around like, um, like students that, you know, whether they're, they're going to be pastors or, you know, whatever, they just have this hunger and this like, hey, they just want to soak up everything that you're mm -hmm. talking about. They want to participate. They want to, and, and it was just that, and it was mind blowing and it was lovely. And um, it was a beautiful period in life. Did that for three years, I want to say, and then went back up to Sacramento to Jesus Culture. And Jesus Culture is where I uh, was a part of their their worship team, like church worship team. And they ended up endorsing me in terms of, uh, they kind of wrote up a letter from officially from Jesus Culture to say, hey, you know, we endorse Gaddison. And, um, and so I would actually travel um, to lead worship uh, at different churches. And uh, I would also set up workshops for worship. And I would go to different churches and I would help them to organize their worship departments, specifically around um, training people on how to even approach it from a heart perspective mm -hmm. um, and what is worship and, and, and why we do what we do and how it's so important to uh, come on this stage and um, make sure you have everything settled inside of yourself so that you can come and make a safe place for, for other people. And then... Which is a whole another part of the story, but but you know you know this. I, I ended up coming out. I was married. I had kids. Ended up coming out as a as a gay man. And I'm long, sure that went over well. Oh, that went over so well. They just accepted me. Loved me. No, <laughs> no. They um, they were not happy. Um, and I remember my pastor basically being like, you know, we were going back and forth. You know, obviously he doesn't agree and. And I was like, you know, hey, listen, like, is, is there any way that you and I, and this is like a mentor of mine. I'm talking mm -hmm. about like somebody who would sit down with me, take time out of his schedule, sit down with me, we'd talk about life. And he's, I said, is there any way that we can just agree to disagree on this and still walk together in family and community? Can we just, can we just let this play out and, and still maintain and keep community. And he said, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. 
And it shook me so, so, so to the core because what is this collective if not a family of God? And if we are a family of God, when do we ever get the right to throw each other away because we disagree? And at that point, if we are able to throw each other away because we disagree, then again, is that a family? Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that a healthy family? And, and I just, I had to deal, as you can imagine, with my anger, my sadness, my pain that came from that moment. But ultimately, I chose Come on, somebody, say choose. Choose. <laughs> I choose, I chose to, um, to, to forgive because ultimately love is the biggest thing for me. You know, at the end of the day, I want it to be said of Gaddison that he loved mm-hmm. and that he, um, he displayed love. And, and I can control other people's actions. I don't know what's motivating those actions. I can take guesses. I can make educated guesses. But either way, it's only God that knows the heart of a man or a woman. And uh, I cannot uh, be that judge. I refuse to put myself in that position. But what I can do and what I can be is love. And so I mm-hmm. chose to forgive. Mm-hmm. I choose to love. I don't, I don't, while I will talk about the facts of those situations, I will never disparage anybody because right. we're all going through a journey. Well, it really boils down in this instance as well as uh, based on a tenet of yep. the church, yep. an organization, yeah. uh, you were, you were uh, dismissed. Yes. You were yes. let go. Yes. Um, and we could look at that metaphorically of being let go so you could mm-hmm. actually thrive. Absolutely. You just didn't know it at the time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which, again, is part of the lesson of humility. Exactly. Yeah. And those are such They're great hard. lessons. <laughs> They're, <hard. laughs> They're so easy. It's like, oh. <laughs> listen, listen, come on, somebody. If you're going through that right now, woo, I, yes. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's painful. But that, that had to have been... Uh, an exceptionally challenging time in your life when you're talking about, okay, I don't have a job. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a church. Yeah. And where, where am I going to go? I mean, yeah. you're just going through all these things. And yeah. also, I'm married. Yep. This, but now kids. I realize I'm gay and, yeah. Yeah. and I got the kids. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there was a period of time. So you were grieving as well. Oh, my gosh. Trying to, in between managing all of these other things, but yes. And trying to find a job. And trying to find a job. And, you know, everything that I've trained for in my life Mm -hmm. is now uh, inaccessible to me. Like, I mean, it was, I was, I was scared beyond what I even had language for in that moment. I didn't know how I was going to make it. Literally, I didn't know how I was going to make it. I didn't know how I was going to survive financially. I didn't know how I was going to emotionally survive in terms of, mm-hmm. um, you know, this is heartbreak. And people know, like, when you experience heartbreak like that, whether that's family walking away, whether that's chosen family that you thought would be around forever walking away, it is so painful. You feel it in your body. Uh, and so, and in that moment, it feels like you 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 won't be able to get through it, or it's going to be forever. And um, man, you know that scripture uh, in the Bible where you talk about David had to encourage himself in the Lord. I, that became really real to me because at that point, it was just like if I don't speak words of life over myself right now, I don't know if I'm going to make make mm-hmm. it through this. Mm-hmm. You know, and and and. The reality is, as much as people, there were some great people in my life that loved me and that kind of thing. There's certain times where you just, I don't know about nobody else, but where I would wake up in the middle of the night and these things, voices, uh, um, thoughts, feelings were bombarding me. Mm -hmm. And the only, I couldn't pick up the phone and call anybody else. I had to dig deep within myself to tell myself, you're going to make it. This is only a moment. This will not last forever. And I'm telling you, Gaddison, if you will just hold on to God, he will not disappoint. Those who put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. Mm -hmm. And that is true. It was true in that moment. It's true now. And um, literally, I am a walking, breathing testimony of that scripture. Those who put their trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. Amen.
So you landed at Harmony. Uh Uh-huh. Come on, Harmony. (laughs) Come on in. And so uh, you and I have talked about this, but I think it's important for people to to receive Mm -hmm. is uh, you and I have talked about you experienced healing Mm. uh, and and hope Mm -hmm. Yes. uh, here. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, um, what's so interesting to me is that... uh, Man, I had never heard of an affirming church. I was like, what is that? I don't know. What does that mean? You know, um, I had never before this. And, and you know, it's like church was my life. So, mm-hmm. for the, so the fact that I had never heard of an affirming church or like, what does this mean? Or um, to walk into these doors and to be able to visibly and uh, to be able to visibly see and to feel the genuine love in this space was definitely life-changing for me. Um, to feel safe mm-hmm. and surrounded by people who are just going to love me for who I am. And they're going to get to know me. And, and you know what I mean? Like, it just, it just, it, to be honest, it was the idea, too, of like, man, I don't have to hide anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have to put on a face. I don't have to hide. I don't have to make it seem like something it's not. I don't have to live up to this whatever standard. Um, But that I can come in and I could be real and I could be honest and people would see me uh, and love me and and champion me, you know. Um, And then, you know, between our conversations and... Uh, you know, going out to the to the, what was it? Is that Starbucks? We yeah. Went to? yeah. <laughs> you know, going out to, to some coffee and talking, and it's just it's I don't know. There was something so healing, and I, maybe uh, even now too. I'm thinking like you know I told you about how when I talked to the the mentor, the pastor, and it was kind of like that. I don't know if I can walk with you in community type thing, but then full circle to come back, have some coffee with you, and 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 feel loved, accepted, and um, that you actually really wanted to see me win, not only um, in this space, but just in life, that just felt like heaven. Mm. So I appreciate that, truly. Well, I appreciate you, and I mean, that's one of the things I want for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I want to say something about that since, oh. we, since we own you. Um, oh Come on now. No, no, no. So um, I, I, you, know what, you know what makes me believe that about you hmm. is that I know it's not just with me. I've watched you do that with every person that comes to this door. You make a beeline for these people to give them a hug, to let them know that they're welcome, to let them know that they belong. Mm. And I want to say to you, like, you will not know the impact that you've had on the world until you step through the pearly gates because there are people that you have impacted that you haven't even met because they've been online or because somebody stepped in these doors and were impacted and then took it somewhere else mm-hmm. and took it back to their family or friends or whatever. And so um, your impact is profound. Your impact is bigger than what you know um, uh, currently. And I'm just, I'm, I'm honored that we got, or we're getting the chance to work together mm-hmm. and, uh, and create a space here at Harmony. Yes, and we have uh, Engage for yes. our... Yes. Uh, right? Come on, Engage. Yeah, come on, Engage. 2024. <laughs> That's right. That's yes. Right. Big year for us That's a here. Big year. That's a and big so year. very important. You know, we talk about harmony, mm-hmm. and, and I, it's, it is such a blessing to get to know you and, and go through all that journey, uh, just listening to you mm-hmm. with the journey and being with you and, and just seeing... Uh, your, I love your children. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, they are such a delight. Full and of life. Yes. I get a, <laughs> Full of life. And I get a chance, you know, because every now and then I go to Harmony Kids right, and right. I get to play with them, and right, so, right. which is great. Uh, but I, I want to just take a couple more questions here about, um, let's talk about the little topic called Christianity. Oh, you know. <laughs> what do you find mm. most attractive mm. about Christianity? Okay. I love that question, actually. 
Um, what I find most attractive about Christianity um, in theory, okay? <laughs> <laughs> in theory, what uh -huh. I find most attractive about Christianity is this idea of love and unconditional love and a sense of belonging and a sense of uh, being held at every point in your life, uh, no matter what you go through, no matter what you find yourself in, this idea that that God and God's children are there to display love, mm. to display um, kindness, and um, that that love is not just meant to stay within the four walls of the church, mm -hmm. but it's actually mm -hmm. meant to be for the the the, the streets, the, the people who need it the most, and the, the ones that feel like they 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 don't deserve to be loved, the ones that feel like they've made too many mistakes, the ones that feel like they're too far gone. That's specifically who we're supposed to be taking this out to, and that ultimately that love transforms the world. That's the most beautiful and attractive thing in theory, about Christianity to me. Yes, yes. We just have to live it out. <laughs> exactly. Right? We just have to That's live it why, out. in theory, it's great. <laughs> Easy to say the words. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Put it into action. Yeah. So uh, if you had a question that you could ask God and get an immediate answer, mm. is there anything that comes to mind, just a, a question that you might have for God? Mm, man, this is a good one. Okay, so... What is the difference between me being an embodiment of love? At least for, for me, when I say I want to be an embodiment of love, I know that, that it really does come with forgiveness, right? Mm. It really does come with sacrifice because that's ultimately what Jesus did for us, right? There's, there's, there is no love without sacrifice, right? Right. And then is there a line? Is there a divine line between that and... Because while Christ... While we were still yet sinners, Christ died. While we were literally enemies of God, Christ died. But what does that look like in real life? Like, how do I, how do I not be taken advantage of, mm -hmm. but still display Christ-like love? I would just really want a clear answer for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Give me a clear answer, God. Because sometimes I find myself towing that line, like, where... Ah, and then sometimes I'm like, listen, I ain't Jesus. I ain't mm -hmm. never claimed to be Jesus. <laughs> right. So maybe you ain't going to get it today. No, I'm <laughs> um, but you know, where's the line? <laughs> anyway. So I, was, I know it was a tough question. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Nothing like having a good one. But yeah. I, now here, here's the easy one that you also may say, oh, yeah. no, oh, this okay. was even tougher than that one. <laughs> so as we wrap this up. Uh -huh. As a worship leader who knows a ton of songs, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ton of lyrics, yep. music out uh, galore, yep. I want you to pick oh, one wow. worship song. Knew this was coming. Yeah, one worship song or lyric mm. that has really spoken to your heart. And I'll make it a little easier to say right now. What one okay. worship Thank song you. Thank you. could you say now? That's appropriate for me right in this moment. It's a song called Mercy, and mm. um, it, the, the, it, the lyric that really gets me is just the hook. It's, and it's simple, but it's just, I take it in. But um, you delight, talking to God, you delight in showing mercy, and mercy triumphs over judgment. And it's such a comforting thought that at the end of the day, God delights in showing mercy. Like, it's not just like, all right, I'll give you some mercy. It's like... He delights, she delights, they delight in showing mercy. And mercy triumphs over judgment. So even yeah. if you feel like you have done whatever and you feel like you deserve to be judged, the mercy of God is here for you to participate in, for you to accept, for you to receive. And God delights in showing mercy and mercy triumphs over judgment. Ooh, it's a victorious thought to me. Amen. And a I great, needed that mercy. Yes. And don't we all? Don't we all? <laughs> and that is a great way to end yeah. our conversation together. I just want to thank you so much mm -hmm. for joining me yeah. 
for an Our Story, the podcast episode. And just also wanted to say thanks to everyone listening. It is such a joy yes. woo, woo, <laughs> to be with you as, and connect with you. And so we look forward again to our next conversation, which will be happening. And Julia Dennis will be uh, joining us for oh, that. She's amazing. And she is amazing. <laughs> but in the meantime, we hope that you enjoy this day and this week and continue to live Uh, loving others, but most especially, love God. Peace. Thanks for listening to Our Story, the podcast with your host, Pastor Mark Stevenson. This month's guest was Gaddison, and this episode was recorded and mixed by me, Donna Miller, with production support by Jace Lucas. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to Our Story, the podcast, so you never miss a new episode. You're listening to the Harmony Podcast Network, Sponsored in part by Hollywood United Methodist Church. Find us on Instagram at Harmony underscore TLC and on Facebook at Harmony TL. We'll see you next month for a conversation with Julia Dennis. Until then, as Pastor Mark likes to say, peace. <laughs>